He held me close while I cried for my mother, the longing for her rarely shared with another. He offered a listening ear for whenever I'm in need. It seems he really wants me to succeed. So I returned home to a poetry night, something in which I once used to delight. The man on stage had a voice so smooth, I had to record it so I could use it to soothe. When I shared it with him, I was invited to a workshop in which I wished the compliments would stop. But I opened myself up to the people there. I'd been so afraid of what I wanted to share. Meeting a trans teacher at a poetry night made a rainy day turn incredibly bright. I remember the excitement I felt knowing he had poems inside he wasn't yet showing. We had a few strong cocktails before he performed. The audience were definitely left better informed. Trans men are so often being left out, but in their importance, I've never had a doubt. To a party I was invited, but I arrived scared. I'm glad the man on a doorstep had a joint he shared. When we talked inside, our similarities were revealed. All the parts about me that are usually well concealed. Our ADHD kept the conversation changing, whilst tips on autism we kept exchanging. At the party, my existence became validated. All the bullied kids that were once hated. Trying to get myself home in the rain from South London, I found myself trying a donut in Clapham Junction. <laughs> he was such a salesman, he even sold himself. I couldn't deny the attraction that was felt. He drew a picture whilst I guessed where he was from, but of course, I just kept getting it wrong. As I took the picture home, I couldn't help but smile. The flirtation was something I hadn't had in a while. My confidence had been lacking, which was why I was surprised to have an eloquent poet listen to me whilst I advised. It turns out his son had been recently diagnosed when autism had been something he fears most. He said, if my son turns out to be like you, then I'm relieved. With all this deficit-based language, it's never strengths one sees. Perhaps he got to go home feeling even a little lighter, but I told him to call me should he ever feel frightened. I hadn't planned on going to an event in a cosy bar, talking to a man about things that we think we are. I was confused when he left, unsure we'd see each other again, but I think now I know that in him I had a friend. We sat through a long discussion on addiction, during which we recognised one another's affliction. Mm -hmm. He gave me a hug after I chose to be unafraid, and told me that my actions were incredibly brave. I was invited to an inspiring art exhibition to show the part I played in this mission. I met the two men who founded a spatial design school. Still have no idea why they thought I was the one that was cool. <laughs> the conversations we had kept my mind stimulated, sharing insight on topics that were loosely related. Perhaps I'll join them one day with a project of my own, if I ever clear my mind enough to get in the creative zone. I was overwhelmed by nights and days of poetry, when previously I had wanted no one to notice me. So I escaped to Wales for a weekend retreat, my friend's housemate I wasn't expecting to meet, let alone stay up talking until early hours, finding comfort in writing because it empowers. Mm -hmm. Every adhd -er needs a body double for productivity. I couldn't have written this if not for what he's given me. I celebrated the end of summer at Carnival and met a man who moved here from Portugal. I didn't expect him to try and give me £10, so this act of kindness made me fall to the ground. He simply didn't want my life to be so rough, and told me that I wasn't pathetic, but tough. The time he spent with me will not be forgotten. If he didn't have a girlfriend, I'd have tried to shoot my shot in. <laughs> but I need to accept that the summer is now over. All these men I've met may have brought me closer. I've been running away from myself for far too long. Through the years of trauma, I've had to remain strong. There was a time at which I couldn't even speak to a man, but now I've healed enough to know that I can. Not every man is going to leave me feeling betrayed. Ten men I met last summer mean I'm no longer afraid. Mm -hmm. Woo! Right. It's not BSL, but here's a little bit of a microphone for you. So this is called Misdiagnoses and Misdiagnoses. Let's talk about this broken system in which we're living, because it's about time myself I start forgiving. You see, it was never my fault that they got it all wrong. I tried to tell them as the list went on. I was diagnosed with OCD at 7 and depression at 11. 
I got used to being picked last because I was always the smartest in my class. <laughs> my photographic memory only resulted in jealousy. My IQ is higher than most and because of my communication style, I do tend to boast. I never expected it would make you all hate me. I was simply fighting for survival after they betrayed me. At home with a mother who told me to stop making excuses whilst I was constantly being covered in bruises, just for being the way I am, so I learned to never let it show, and no one ever taught me that I could say no. Mm. Maybe that's why I was raped at 17, and taught to keep it quiet so as not to cause a scene. Slut shamed all the way through my last year of school, so whoever diagnosed social anxiety disorder was clearly a fool. Mm. All this lack of recognition led to was attempt after attempt to take my own life, to the point where I could no longer be in a room with a knife. So they added borderline personality disorder to the list when I was 21. How do I explain to them that they keep getting it wrong? It's obvious, so why couldn't you see from the inability to maintain eye contact with me? Or how my words and actions are repetitive and I'm not someone whose routine should be messed with? You may notice a deficit in the way that I speak or feel that my conversational skills are weak because I can never understand all these social norms or why it's always my job to become better informed. They were trying to beat the autism out of me since I was young, so this mess of a person is who I've become. I can't change who I am, so they stopped giving a damn. Applied behaviour analysis, anger management, cognitive behavioural therapy, psychotherapy, they keep trying to fix me. How do I make them see I'm not broken? This verbal shutdown can leave my words unspoken, but I have the ability to do the same as you. Why did I have to be the one to prove this true? I found my tribe working in an autism school, a place in which I was finally able to play by the rules. I was never overwhelmed by all the bright lights, only processing that which was good for my eyes. I was introduced to sensory items that blew my mind and helped me to finally regulate all this chaos inside. I think that's when my brain really began to thrive, so I learned how I was finally going to survive. I trained to be a teacher and now a senko, so professionals sit and listen to what I know when I tell them I have complex PTSD from all the years undiagnosed. That's why my neurodivergence never showed. I kept trying to mask till it suddenly broke. Can't keep self-medicating with all this smoke. So I guess now it's time I show the autistic me. Perhaps you've already recognised my ADHD. I have sensory processing difficulties and I'm food avoidant or restrictive. Only nothing I like ever stays consistent. I am pathologically demand avoidant, which most people get annoyed with, especially me, because that includes avoiding fun. I think now that my list may finally be done, all these missed diagnoses on top of missed diagnoses. I promise it's not neurosis, though I started off in early intervention in psychosis, only to end up here. Yeah. So hopefully, this year, they will listen to me, this time, when I tell them that they got it all wrong. Thank you. Thank you.